Sorry, Jeff. I'm like I can see your eyes, eyes are watering. Like crying. Yeah. I'm like <laughs> trying not to cough in your face. Is somebody experiencing a sexual oh. hiatus in their own life? Is, this... <laughs> Is my vagus nerve getting activated? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry. My nerves are fully activated. Oh, I bet they are, girl. Hey, girl, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> we high five for that, too. <laughs> I'm Julie Jeske. I'm a licensed professional counselor specializing in intimacy, relationships, and sexuality. Hi, I'm Gina, and I'm a relationship coach and a retreat leader who supports non traditional couples all over the world. We are going to normalize and give people better information about sex and relationships. We want more people to have tools to create dreamy, connecting partnerships. We're going to talk about sex, desire, trust, intimacy, pleasure, and communication. We're going to talk about the most common things people bring into our offices. And we're going to give you tools that can help you take action in order to create a relationship that will make you swoon. This podcast is for anyone who wants to experience more pleasure, joy, and connection with themselves or others. We're going to talk about intimacy and sexuality in detail. Just a heads up, in case you want to listen later. Or with headphones on. Or in your sex dungeon. It's up to you. Hi, Gina. Hi, Julie. Um, I, this topic that we're talking about today is something that comes up in my office quite a bit, so I'm super excited about it. And thank you for humoring me and letting me talk about it today. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it does come up a lot in my office. I was just telling you that I'm not as excited to talk about this one, I think, because it um, it's such a downer for people when they're in yeah. it, right? Yeah. Like, and I think about all the times I've sat with folks when they can feel, uh, yeah, stuck or overwhelmed or kind of hopeless mm-hmm. a little bit mm-hmm. um, or really anxious and yeah. nervous. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that said, we didn't even say what the topic was yet. <laughs> well, Everyone's on the edge of their seats. <laughs> when I try to explain it to you, I use like 20 sentences. I'm like, this thing. And you're like, oh, right. Sex after hiatus. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yes. Was sex, I that smart? Yeah, you were so smart. This was a while ago right. that we came up with this one. So we'll see where you are today. But yeah. um, So sex after hiatus. Yeah. And what hiatus, does that look like when it comes in your office yeah it depends I mean I've worked with people who haven't had sex in a couple years um Mm -hmm. you know couples who are together and um they um a lot of their relationship works and this is one area that they've had either tension or pain or um challenges or lack of interest and so Mm -hmm. it for a while they just kind of let it be right Mm -hmm. um sometimes it's people after having a kid, sometimes it's people um, who are dealing with like chronic pain or illness. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it's it doesn't have to be years to feel like a hiatus for someone, right? Because yeah. what what happens is anytime we lose consistency in some area of our lives, it feels a little awkward or intimidating or uncomfortable mm-hmm. to bring it back, right? Right. And so it's like whatever amount of time that is for you, that's what we would mean by hiatus. When you haven't had sex for a while and you're wanting to re-engage sexually, how mm-hmm. do you do it, right? And um, also we're going to normalize it first because that's yeah. what we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that you, you what you were what came to mind when you were talking about that is the phrase like it's just like riding a bike. Only it it's not actually <laughs> just like riding a bike is what's more true about this, right? Like, yeah. you, it can feel really awkward, and um, I mean, there's a little bit of vulnerability in bike riding for many people, but this is a we always yeah. talk about how vulnerable it is to engage with somebody else, right? Um, but when you're kind of out of the practice of it and um, your heart or parts of your identity or your worth or your attractiveness or your desires or your fantasies can feel like they're on the line, putting right. them out there right. with someone again, even folks who are like super excited to get back into it together, can yeah. it, it can be really, it can feel like clunky or awkward right. or really challenging. Yeah. yeah. And then the expectation is like, it's been a while. So this better be really good <laughs> to make yeah. up for it. Right. And so then people prolong it even more because they're like, oh, but, you know, mm-hmm. um, I haven't had a wax in a while or I want to go buy mm-hmm. some underwear first or we had this weird little interaction or, you know, the, you know, Mer- Mercury's retrograde, <laughs> like whatever yeah. it is. Right. <laughs> Starts to a small potential obstacles start to become huge obstacles because the buildup has become so great 
that mm-hmm. we don't want to um, we don't want to have to gone have gone this long and then yeah. have it be a disappointment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can we talk a little bit about what are like some of you started talking a little mm-hmm. bit about this, but I think. You know, our we talk all the time about the norms in our culture yeah. around yep. sex, like our our our, no, our belief on the on the front, not true, but the belief out there is right. that everybody else is having sex on a whatever bi weekly basis, daily basis, whatever your you believe your normal measure. is. You're like you've decided everybody around you is probably doing that, and right. you're just the one who's not. Like, yeah, right. And so, but the truth is. A lot of folks fall out of practice of yes. having sexual connection. And I think it's one thing that I see that can be really great. But the, I, I get a lot of folks who are like brand new together and they're like, we don't want to fall out of having right. sex or we don't want to get out of the practice. We don't want to lose passion. We don't want to lose desire or whatever. How do we do that? And so yeah. I'm, I'm, I want to talk, I guess, with you a little bit about like, what are the first, what are some of the like starts down this path towards having a hiatus Mm -hmm. because you mentioned like for a lot of folks there are stressors in life like maybe they become a caregiver for someone um maybe they move across the country and have a baby (laughs) maybe (laughs) maybe they have new children maybe there's new jobs or like seasons of work that are particularly stressful or something um or i think about like you know there are hormonal changes and body changes. You yes. talked about chronic pain stuff. Yeah. Um, where <clears throat> what I see is folks who are, it's usually folks who are really highly committed to each other. They're very comfy with each other. Yeah. There's a lot of trust there. Totally. Like you said, the whole relationship works really well. Yeah. But they're like, well, I see this attitude of like, oh yeah, we'll get to it. Right. Well, ha- I know we'll get around to it yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 Not tonight, but maybe tomorrow, but maybe the yeah. next day, but maybe the next day. Right. Yep. So people start to like take for granted that it will happen. Yeah. And then they kind of like put it off, put it off. Right. It's not that they don't enjoy it or whatever, but right. they just get into this, uh, this, the time grows where they're out of Practice, that kind of connection. Yep. They're not feeling yeah. it. They're not practicing it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, what was a two day or a two week time period grows into three months, six right. months, three years. Yeah. Et cetera. Right. Yep. And so sometimes I think people, when other people hear about this, they think like, oh, some big dramatic thing has happened that's gotten (laughs) in the way of sex. And occasionally Mm -hmm. that's the case, right? Because, you know, we talked about trauma recently. Sometimes something will happen. Um, Sometimes someone will have a traumatic experience in their life um, Mm -hmm. outside of their intimate relationship, maybe, um, that causes them to not want to be touched, that causes them to feel alarm when they're um, sexually Mm. intimate or emotionally intimate, right? So sometimes there is a big thing that happens um, or there's the big things like, you know, pregnancy. Maybe there's a pregnancy with a lot of um, uh, bed rest or illness or high risk involved, right? And then maybe a traumatic birth. Like there are big things that can happen. And also there's atrophy that happens in relationships, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, we talked about um, recently on our our romantic holiday episode about um, how easy it is for people not to have sex around the holidays, how easy it is for people not to go on dates around the holidays because mm-hmm. there's so many other things competing for our attention, right? Um, what I love, one of the things I love that you're saying is you're talking about how people get out of practice. And we don't think about sex as a practice. We think about it as this um, thing that overtakes our bodies and just makes us like feel totally Mm -hmm. fiery and like drawn to something. And I love it when that happens, right? Yeah. And also there is a practice element of anything we want to prioritize in our lives. Yeah, we think about it like it's like it's breathing, like it should yeah. just come easily. Yeah. We should just know how to do it. Yeah. Uh, our body should almost just do it automatically. Right. But it's more like dancing. Yeah. Right? Whether it's dancing solo or dancing with yeah. a partner. Yeah. It's like you got to figure out some choreography. You got to yeah. find a beat. Then the beat changes. Right. Then this part of me wants to move this other yep. way. Then this feels good today. Then I don't even like music tomorrow. Right. You know, like it's it's yeah. changing and it's it is it's like a you know, a practice to find like literally rhythms or beats right. that feel good to you and or like particular movements that you feel confident yeah. or um, like empowered or even some that feel like adventurous. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah. Right. And like with dancing, sometimes we are overtaken by music and we just start to move. And sometimes mm -hmm. we make a decision to dance. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so that's what happens <clears throat> often is people finally make the decision of like, OK, I want to put energy yeah. into this. But by now, there's so much distance in this one area. And I don't know how to bridge it. Um, I often hear from people who are like, oh, we're really goofy with each other. We're goofy. We make poop jokes all the time. <laughs> like it's not necessarily a super sexy environment, but it's a funny, playful, giddy one. Right. And mm -hmm. so then we'll talk about like how we can find room for play and sex, but maybe not goofiness for this couple. Right. Mm -hmm. um, or people are like, we we're, we're pro we process all the time. There's a lot of heaviness in yeah. our lives. Right. And so it's like it feels really hard to transition into sex from that you know and so we look at all of these pieces and do our best to close that distance right close the chasm that's developed mm -hmm. between people yeah yeah so let me just say one other thing before Good. I was Please. just about to have us move on but the other part I really see is a lot of folks take this very personally that they yeah. think it's about like uh, because my body has changed or we have been aging or I've been right. in a bad mood or whatever, you no longer desire me. I'm no longer attractive um, or something's wrong with me that maybe yeah. my desire has been lower or even if our desire hasn't been lower that we just like, what is it that's wrong with us or me that, you know, it's not coming easily. Yeah. Right. And I think um, it's I just think it's so important to put out there that it's not it's not personal right. usually. Right. I mean, there are times when there's something that's come up between people or there, you know, sure. something has changed for sure, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't have to be. And I think a lot of that, that personalizing it, um, that adds another layer of difficulty in to overcome the distance between me and a partner. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really complex and, and there's, uh, there are a ton of factors. I mean, sometimes something happens as simple as, people have sex and something embarrassing happens, right? Or something awkward happens, or it's just not quite the way that they were hoping. And then they start to feel a little self-conscious or a mm -hmm. little more like, oh God, I don't want that to happen next time, right? So we're gonna, I'm gonna wait until I feel a little bit, it's that thought of like, I'm just gonna wait. We've got time, we'll just wait, <laughs> right? That can yeah. then create that distance, <clears throat> you know? Um, and then sometimes, too, there's fighting and there's all sorts of things that go along with it. But yeah. often by the time people come to see me, they're like, look, all this stuff is good. We're friends. We're co-managers of a, of a household. Maybe we're parents together. Um, we're companions and great all of these ways. And we really want to connect in this other place. Right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think. um I see that so often that, and we've talked a little bit in previous podcasts about it's Esther Perel, you know how much mm -hmm. I love to cite her, talks about this like mate in making in captivity, this like almost duality or like polarity sometimes between comfort and trust and friendship. Like yeah. you were saying, we get so many people in this situation who are great friends and really good life partners. Yeah. Um, but they've lost a lot of the mystery, intrigue, the surprise, this other element that comes with passion. Mm -hmm. And whether that be me independently needing to connect to my own desire, drive, like my own, how can I surprise myself? Where right. are my passion? What's my yeah. core about? We talked about this on a couple of previous um, episodes. Or whether it's between us. We both mm -hmm. need to be doing this or we need to be doing some adventure together. We need to be seeing each other in new ways or doing some discovery. Um that's one of the other things that I see in a lot of those folks who are such good buddies, mm -hmm. um, but they're not f connecting sexually. Yeah. Yeah. So we have options, right? So there's the possibility mm -hmm. of looking at my own stuff first, rather than waiting for someone to initiate with me or waiting for someone else to bring it up. And maybe it feels too intense for me to just like initiate cold, right? I can explore the things that make me feel alive. I can explore the things that give me pleasure. I can explore the things that make me feel excited and exciting, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like when I, when I explore my own energy, I think so often in relationship, it's really compelling to think about how the other person could do the work, right? Like how the yeah. other person could, if only he would do this or she would do this or they would do like, it would all be better. Right. And so mm -hmm. there is the possibility of starting to shift things by looking at my own stuff. Right. And like focusing mm. on my own self. 
Hey, this is Jeff, producer of the podcast. Just want to take a quick break and remind you that this podcast is brought to you by TherapyDen.com. TherapyDen.com is an inclusive and progressive therapist directory. If you feel like you might be having some sexual hiatus problems in your relationship, then you can easily find a couples counselor at TherapyDen.com. You can find one in your neighborhood or you can find an online counselor. So head over to Therapy Den to find your next therapist. And if you're a therapist and you're listening to this episode, you can also go to therapyden.com and sign up for a profile for free. No credit card required. Okay, back to the show. So one option is to focus on yourself, right? Um, Mm -hmm. There are other things you can do in your relationship. And so often because it does feel so vulnerable, like you were saying, to just go have sex, right? Um, Otherwise, people would do it. We start with communication. Mm-hmm. We start with talking about intimacy. We talk. We start with talking about, often people have been talking about what's bad about the situation or sad about the situation or frustrating mm-hmm. about the situation or they've t- been talking about places they feel like they're not measuring up. So talking about things that excite them, talking about ways they want to connect, right? So that's another option. Um, and then, and this is the one I often get I love how like excited you get about this. I know. I love I love talking about this stuff. You can talk about betrayal next week. I want to talk about this this week. Um, another option, and this is one where I like often have one person who's like, this sounds great. Another person is like, nope, I don't love this, would be to plan intimacy, right? Mm-hmm. And so we make a plan for it. And what's tricky about this is that People, again, have this idea that it should be natural, it should be spontaneous, it should just happen easily. But if it hasn't, we need to do something different, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And so you might not start with planning sex. You might start with planning a date or planning a massage or planning a great makeout session, right? Planning Mm -hmm. the things that historically have opened you and your body to the idea of being sexual, right? Okay. Can I, I got to ask you about that partner who is like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to plan it. Yeah. I want it to be spontaneous. I don't want to feel like it's an assignment that Mm -hmm. doesn't feel authentic to me because that's what I hear from that person all the time. What do you say to them? I'd be like, great. So not having sex for another year feels pretty authentic to you. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I can be a little, I get a little Mm -hmm. feisty on this topic, right? I mean, what's the alternative? No, but that's what I say too, right? Like it's not what you're, uh, what you're doing, hoping for spontaneity isn't working. You can keep waiting. I mean, is it, I think Ian Kerner who says spontaneous is the best so spontaneous sex is the best sex that will never happen, right? Like <laughs> we can that. keep waiting. We can keep waiting. Um, I mm-hmm. want, here's the thing. I want you to have spontaneous sex too. And mm-hmm. sometimes we have to plant the seeds and get back into practice first, right? right? And so if we think about scheduling, I'll hear from people who are like, ugh, I don't want to schedule. Um, I wrote, I did like a Facebook live about this a couple years ago and someone wrote and was like, that's like making a reservation and I only want to make reservations for dinner. And I was like, all right, like that's the attitude people have. Right. Mm -hmm. I only, I don't want to have to make an appointment. I just want unlimited access. Right. Right. And it's like, well, one, it's another human. So you don't get unlimited access to another human. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and two is we plan all sorts of fun things. You don't only plan right. the boring things. You don't only plan the miserable things. You plan vacations. <laughs> you plan nights yeah. out with friends. Like if I want to, I mean, I plan half the pleasure in my life. If I want to go to Italy, like I got to figure it out. I don't get to just get on an airplane and go, right? right? Yeah, just that morning you felt like it. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, right. what am I going to do today? I'm going to just get on an that. airplane, right? And so part of it is our mindset, Right. So Mm -hmm. you can change your mindset. Sometimes that's the easiest thing to change. Change your perception of it, you know? Okay. Let me, can I have you? I love this because you're so into this. (laughs) Yeah, it's great. Um, uh, Tell me about, so the other person I hear who's Mm -hmm. like, I don't want to plan it is Uh like, is the person who says, I don't want to plan it because I don't want to feel obligated to have sex. I don't want to feel pressure. I don't want to feel like I have to. Right. And if we plan it, then I, then I, then I feel obligated. So what do you say to that person? Yeah. That it, one of the things people worry about with planning is that it is going to create pressure. And often what I hear mm-hmm. that actually happens is it eliminates or relieves pressure. Because hmm. here's the other thing. People who aren't having sex still have the pressure of like, oh, God, are they going to initiate? 
Oh right. dear, am I supposed to initiate? Oh man, another day has gone by. What's going to happen? You know, like there's still pressure there, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, one of the ways we can eliminate pressure is by knowing something's coming up, I can fully plan for it, right? Right. And so if I'm like, oh gosh, you know, I, we would have sex, but I ate, you know, I ate the food that makes me bloated or gassy or whatever, or I, you know, tonight would have been a good night, but I did this thing, like planning, it allows you to prepare your body and your mind. And so you can use your tools. You can listen to mm -hmm. erotica earlier in the day. You can masturbate. You can do the things that help you feel primed and ready to go. And if your date comes, you know, your, your planned sex rolls around and you're not feeling it, then you can have a conversation. But, but the difference is then I will ask people to make a commitment to come back to it a different day rather than mm -hmm. if it's like the day comes up and it's like, I'm just, I'm feeling sick. I can't do it. It's like, okay. Mm -hmm. And the next day comes up, oh, sorry, now I'm stressed out because you were a jerk earlier. Okay, and now you're not doing it anymore. You know what I mean? Right. And so um, you also can plan not to have sex, but to be intimate. And then you show right. up and you do the things that feel good. So that's often where I start with people is like plan to be sexually intimate. That can include talking about sex. That can include right. um, a giving and receiving exercise, which I'll talk more about in the in the practices. Right. It can include mm -hmm. massage. It can include taking a bath or shower together. It can include mutual masturbation. If 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 engaging intimately with your partner in a physical way or penetration feels too intense for you, you do not have to do that. But there are. I mean, we could do multiple episodes mm -hmm. where we give a list of all the different options you could have <laughs> with somebody. Because I feel like sometimes people just don't like it's like A or B. Mm -hmm. It's like, no way. There's like multiple al alphabets <laughs> of options right. we can choose from, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. OK, we'll do that on a future okay. podcast. <laughs> all the ways you can explore <laughs> sexual intimacy with people. Yeah. That'll be fun. It'll be, see, that we both light up for that. I'm one. into that one. Yeah. Yeah. So the analogy I often use with this topic is is exercise, right? So it's like if I am in the habit of exercising, you know, it's like I love to walk. So when I'm in the habit to walk, um, I don't even really have to think about it. I'm putting hmm. my shoes on, my little outfit. I've planned out when it's going to happen. I schedule it, by the way, because I'm a busy person. So I've got to schedule it. Otherwise, it's not mm -hmm. going to happen, right? Um and I just do it. I don't let much get in the way. I don't let, you know, if I'm, if I'm right. tired, I still do it. If it's rainy, I still do it. Like I just make it a priority. Now, when there's an interruption, if I've been sick, if I've been traveling, if something else has gotten in the way, getting back into it can be so challenging. And I have right. all the excuses, right? It's like, yeah. oh, but there's going to be no parking at the gym. Or, oh, what if, I, you know, <laughs> I have to wait to use a machine. Or, oh, I don't want to get my hair sweaty. I don't want to have to wash my hair. Like, my workout clothes are dirty. Like, there's all the excuses, mm -hmm. right? And sex is very similar. The things that feel like big excuses are not an excuse when there's consistency. And so... For people who are listening and are like, wow, I don't, I've not been on a sexual hiatus. I don't have to worry about it. I will say <laughs> like, practice consistency and you won't, you know, like yeah. show up for each other, show up right. for each other. And I don't have a magic number. People, you know, it's like, here's another magic number people want is like, how often should I have sex? It's like yeah. often enough where you don't get into a hiatus, <laughs> often enough yeah. where you don't get to the point where you're like, oh God, it's been a while. How does this work? What should mm -hmm. we do? Yes. Yeah. yeah. How does this work? People say that all the time and it sounds silly because we know how being intimate works. But like we have muscle memory and we for, we worry that we're not going to remember, like, do you like mm -hmm. to be touched here? Am I, do we kiss first? Like, do you hug me? Do I hug you? Who takes off the shirt first? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like all of those yeah. things. Right. When we're doing it with consistency, we don't think we mm -hmm. just move toward each other. Right. And so that's the right. thing is, is do our doing our best to keep some level of consistency. Right. Well, and you, you and I've talked many times in these podcasts about how it's not about like, it has to be, it has to be penetrative, like air yes. It has to be penetrative sex or not, but like even, even sharing sexual fantasies, yeah. even talking about it, right. Like can right. be part of that sort of like creating a more, a more regular or a more consistent, um, 
air of like sexual connection mm-hmm. and intimacy between you. Yeah. And so not talking about it like, why aren't we having it? Right. But talking about it like, hey, remember that time this was really cool that we did this thing and it felt yes. really good and I love the way that your face looked. I love the way that this sounded. Or, um, hey, I've always thought about doing this thing. Not let's do it now or why aren't we doing right. it or why haven't we done it? Right. That that we're not getting into that. But just like sharing fantasies, sharing ideas mm-hmm. can help sort of like fan little flames. I had a client once who was like, I hate the flame metaphor, but um, so whenever <laughs> I, I use it, I, now I think of him. Flame metaphor. <laughs> I know, right? But it is like, it needs energy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. Yep. So, yeah. Or a thread. I had someone once talk about it as a thread and I like that too, because mm-hmm. it keeps that connection going. That's what we're talking about is when there's a long space, we lose momentum in anything, mm-hmm. exercise, sex, whatever it is, right? Yeah. And so what we're trying to do is keep that connection, right? Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be penis and vagina intercourse to keep that connection. It can be, mm-hmm. but it can be making out. It can be talking. It can be touching. It can be massage. It can be um, showing up sexually in different ways, right? Yeah. But it's about prioritizing that connection and that consistency so that when we are ready to have a more acrobatic experience or a more (laughs) prolonged sexual experience, it doesn't feel like we're going from being buddies who, you know, go to the bathroom with the door open to trying to have sex with each other, you know? Yeah. You know, you, when you were talking about that exercise metaphor, I I made me think I used to, did I ever tell you I used to run marathons? No. I used to run marathons. And that means usually when you're running long distances like that, you have to run every every day um, or like a lot. And um, I hated it. Every time Mm. I would start running, I hated it. And at exactly a mile in, I would think, oh my God, I'm so glad I'm doing this. I'm Uh, so proud of myself for getting out here, right? And I offer that just because I think about, I'm, most of the folks we're talking about don't hate right. um, having sex, yeah. right? Yeah. But, um, you know, I think about that part that's like, oh, well, that's a lot of energy that right. can come up in a right. lot of people, it's right? Be a mess. That's similar not to going to the gym. Up a mess afterwards. <laughs> right. But, I mean, every, I could say almost every, I don't know if this is accurate, but most, like the vast majority of clients I've ever worked with, once they do it again, they're yes. like, oh, man, why don't we do this more often? This yes. is great. We're good at this, you right. know? Yep. And so it is part of like, keeping returning to that I think the advice portion which is probably where we're gonna transition to soon but my mm-hmm. advice was try again yeah try again <laughs> and then try again right like just like keep trying keep yes. showing up for it yep. um yeah yeah I mean this goes back to like the spontaneous versus responsive desire and that if we're waiting to feel excited we might mm-hmm. be waiting for a long time right and so mm-hmm. if I know what I like if I like you if you know what you like we can show up and do those things and typically trust that then we will become engaged and excited and it will feel good and afterwards we'll be grateful for the experience mm-hmm. you know mhm So some of our resources, I mean, you've mentioned Mating in Captivity by Esther Perel, which we've Mm -hmm. mentioned in other podcasts as well. And then two other resources, our previous podcasts, which you could listen. I mean, we have a lot of information on similar topics in previous episodes. These two in particular, one is our sexual communication episode, right? And so for a lot of people, um, maybe talking about some things and getting guided information on how to talk about things might feel like an easier step than being physical. If it's been a long Mm -hmm. hiatus, you might want to start with the communication piece, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And then I didn't, hadn't written this down, but then as you were talking, I'm like, oh, the other one is our erotic fire episode, like tending your erotic fire, right? Like keeping that energy going so that you don't get into the sexual hiatus. And then if you do, be gentle with yourself. Forgive yourself. Like yeah. hiatuses happen. They happen all mm-hmm. the time. Even really sexy people, people who prioritize sex, people who, who <laughs> really enjoy it. Like they have hiatuses because mm-hmm. things happen. Things happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Can I go into the practice? Please do. Okay. I can't You're even breathe. Like, so I can't even stop. I'm just like, and this another thing, favorite. and another thing, and another thing. <laughs> Bring me your sexual hiatus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so one practice is making an intimacy date. Hmm. Because if we're just waiting for spontaneity or if we're giving someone the assignment to initiate, that can feel like pressure too, right? So if I'm waiting mm-hmm. for you to initiate or I have to initiate, like, whew, that can feel intense. So one possibility is to make an intimacy date. Mm-hmm. 
And then an option that I have for your intimacy date, if, um, if it's been a while, if you're feeling a little disconnected physically and sexually from each other, if you're not quite sure, maybe, maybe, um, there has been some tension around how you're touching each other or how you're not touching each other. Maybe there's been like, oh, this just doesn't feel good to me and that's what created the hiatus. Or maybe it's just time to kind of go back to basics. Um, I have an exercise called giving and receiving that I often give clients and I will put it mm -hmm. on our um, resource page, therapyden.com slash swoon. It will list it all out. But basically you're going to take turns exploring touch with each other and giving mm -hmm. feedback in a really loving, non-judgmental, non-critical way, right? Sure. Um, to encourage ways you like to be touched. And so there's the vulnerability of receiving and giving, right? And also it does, um, it's very, it's very boundaried and structured to start. So often people don't feel a lot of pressure because there's certain parts of the body you're not going to interact mm -hmm. with the first time, right? And then it can kind of graduate into a more sexual experience after you've done it a couple times. So there awesome. you have it. Sexual hiatus. Getting, yeah. And so the, that'll be on our website, therapyden.com mm -hmm. slash swoon. Yes. If people want to get in touch with you to talk more about this, because you're so excited I'm about it, so Julie. excited about <laughs> How it. How should they get in touch with you? <laughs> Let me be clear. I'm not excited about sexual hiatuses. I'm excited <laughs> about the possibility of ending them and like mm -hmm. eliminating them, right? Yeah. Um, they can get in touch. Oh, my goodness. They can get in touch with me at juliejeski.com. Um, I'm on Instagram, julie underscore jeski, and on Facebook at Julie Jeski. What about you, Gina? Um, I'm at heygina.com or um, any of the social media at love Gina Senna. Awesome. And as always, we want to thank everybody who um, has been, who have been listening through all of these episodes, all of your support, your subscriptions, your reviews, all of that means so much to us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone.